Hello, hello. Look, new camera angle, ready for episode four of the Airfix 172nd starter set. Jet Provost T4. T4. Right then, so we get onto some painting. So, the last episode was about things you need to buy. It wasn't about any painting or anything, we didn't actually do any model making. This time, we're going to crack on. Right then, so we cleaned up some bits. What what I've done is I've taken off all the large bits and sanded them and got them all prepped ready for painting and left all the smaller bits, all the little tiny bits, because we're going to paint them on the sprue and then when we've taken them off we'll do a little bit of clean up and a bit of a, a touch up where the points are. Now because I'm doing mine on a diorama as if it's on an airfield, I'm not going to bother painting the pilots but you can if you want, there's nothing to stop you. Just be aware, that if you're doing that, there is a step in the destructions that you need to miss out. Step four, if you're not using the pilot, you use parts A1 and A2 together. It's like the cushion and the harnesses, the seat harnesses. If you're using, if you're going to put the pilot in, if you're going to suspend it from your ceiling or something, you want it flying, or you just want to put the pilots in on the deck. Don't put parts A1 and A2 in. Okay, otherwise you won't fit. You'd be like, I'm, I'm off the edge of the seat. Which you already want. So let's crack on with some painting. Now, the best way of doing this is to pick your one colour and then paint the bits you can. All of them, all of the things. Okay, it says you have to keep going back, going back. Backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. All right. So, look through your instructions. We're going to be using thirty-three, which is the matte black. <coughs> I got the throbbing thought. How is it when I start talking to you lot on the internet? I got oh, <coughs> right. An important thing to have when you're making is tea or coffee or some sort of liquid refreshment. <coughs> oh, yeah, that's better. Right then, so, we'll paint everything we can, the 33, apart from step 3, which is the seat, because we're going to have to fasten that together, and we haven't done that yet, and then when we get to that stage, I'm going to be showing you how to use Satan's snot, okay, now if you've been fortunate and you've gone and got yourself a your contactor, or your, uh, to me, extra thin, Use that. You don't have to use Satan's snot, but we will. We will. Umbrella well, probably going to sue me now for that. I don't. But I don't care. It's the truth. You can't sue me for the truth. Right then. So let's jog on with this and start doing some paintings. Now we're going to be painting with black. Now what I've done is I've put some in our wet palette. You did remember to make one, didn't you? What do you mean you missed it? Go back an episode and we'll teach you. It'll show you how to make one of these. These are great. You're going to fall in love with a wet palette. And our brushing of much brushiness. So we'll use the parts in order. 33, which is the actual cockpit floor and the back firewall. Now, if you notice on it, there are lots of relief details like electronic gadgetry and gadgets and we can paint over those because we're going to touch those with silver and the best way of painting silver is to put it black underneath touch me on this all will become apparent so when it comes to painting a little bit on your wet palette now i've got two colors here because the secret with black is once you paint it black you can't do anything else to it okay you can't add shadows you can't do defined lines to make it look darker. Once it's black, it's black. So, we've only got a limited palette with this kit. We've got four colours. We've got red, a matte black, a light grey and a silver. Okay. So, what we can do is I've done black there and the grey there. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter on part 33. And... 
sorry, not part 33, that's colour 33. Yeah. I'm an idiot sometimes. On part A8, part B15. Doesn't matter because it's the floor and it's the instrument panel, the column. You're not going to see those. And the floor is going to be black anyway. So let's just paint those black. And the, the front firewall is black as well. So, right. You notice what I did there? I put paint on my brush on the end of the brush. Now I've also got in between the two, I've got some water. You need to thin your paint. Always thin your paint. Now, if you're using an airbrush, the rule of thumb is the consistency of skimmed milk. We're not using an airbrush, we're using a paintbrush. The rule of thumb with paintbrush, with acrylic paints, is the consistency of ordinary milk, full fat, blue top milk. Okay? So, there's a tiny bit more water between the two. Now, these pipettes, don't panic. These are so cheap. I picked these up for less than £3 for 100 on the Ebays. You don't have to do this. If you've got younger siblings or you're quite young yourself, your mum at one stage or the other has probably been through about 20 or 30 bottles of Calpol on you and your brothers and sisters over the past few years. Have a look in a drawer. You'll probably find the syringe things. Ah, see where I'm going with this? Ah, see? Genius. Ask your mum if you can have a couple of the syringe things that you get with medicine bottles. They're great to have. If Oh, I think they knocked my tea over. Oh, my God. Right. If you if you haven't got these, ask her for some of them. They're great things to have. Right. So, let's give it a bit of a thin and then start painting. That's a little bit too thin. Now, the secret... secret <laughs> I'll use my words in a minute. The secret to painting, right, is don't hit it with a huge blob of paint and try and cover it in one go. Because it will look absolutely pantsical. It'll look like your granddad's pantaloons and you don't want that. So, thin coats. Okay. Now, you see how that is? It's a bit dark, I see, isn't it? This light. I've got my big light on and everything. Right, so a very thin coat. You can still see the grey underneath. That's fine. We're going to give it two or three coats. And that's the secret to really good brushing. Okay. Two or three thin coats. Not one dirty grit big blob. Alright. Because it will honestly look like your granddad's pantaloons. It would be rubbish. It would be horrible. You don't want it. So, really thin coats, okay, and go in the same direction on your first coat. So, I'm going that way. So, all my brush strokes are going that way, okay. When we come to the next coat, all my brush strokes will go this way. And then the third coat again will be that way, okay. And that's the secret to really good brush painting. Thin your paints, two or three thin coats, and opposite directions. All right, everything will be covered, and you won't get rid of detail. You want to keep the detail. If you plaster the paint on, you'll get full of bush marks, and you will lose so much of the detail on the kit. Not so much with this one because it's quite well defined, but some kits you'll find you'll have like rivet details, you'll have panel lines. If you put the paint on too thick, you'll lose all that and you'll end up with a dead flat boring finish with lots of brush marks in it. You don't want it, do you? you don't. Trust me on this, you don't want it. So, nice and thin coats, okay, and in the same direction. Now, just thin this with ordinary water. You can use, this is umbro paint, you can use umbro acrylic thinners. But you don't need to. Seriously, you don't need to. It's good stuff. You could use things like a flow improver or a retarder. Now, a flow improver will make your, your paint flow a lot easier, hence the term. And a retarder will slow down the drying time. Now, a retarder is good 
when we come to big areas like this okay where it's going to be all the red color all right a retarder slows the drying time it gives it time even if you put a tiny brush level in there the paint will self level to a certain degree all right it's got a retarder in it it gives it more time to do that we're not doing that because it's it costs money and it's money we don't have all right so we'll just do the thin coats alternatively all right that's why i told you about the big bush makes it easier then just do the coats you won't get as many bush marks so let's crack on that's about how we want it for our first coat okay is that can you see that okay probably not i must have sort of better light than that i've got a cracking led light system but i've only got it above i think i'm gonna to have to get some more lighting this way and this way right now you don't need to bother about the back and the underneath okay you might want to do this but i'm going to do this bit just a little bit because you might actually see some of that inadvertently all right and it will disguise the fact that if you haven't fitted it quite properly it won't be as noticeable as a a black area and then a red area behind it and a gray line in between okay so it's good to do it occasionally but be very careful when you get down here you don't want to get paint where you're going to join it okay if you do once it's dried just give it a very light sanding and take that off okay because glue doesn't stick to paint very well it's designed to stick plastic to plastic so that's that done let's put that to one side for a bit now because it is acrylic paint it doesn't take very long to dry it takes about 10 or 15 minutes to dry it takes it a lot longer to cure there's a big difference between drying and curing. Drying means the top area is dry to the touch. But the paint hasn't cured properly, it hasn't fully dried. All right? It could take, with acrylics, it could take two or three hours. With enamels, it takes 24 hours. Some paints, it takes even longer. Right, so let's give this one a bit of a blast. As our friend Skipper Ted would say, slap it on. Slap it on his ink coats. Right, so that and that. So that's the cockpit area, the firewall. Now, if you look on the instructions, the whole cockpit is black. So, what we want to do is in between that area there, we want to paint that black. You can actually go a little bit further and a little bit further down okay just to make sure you've covered it all all right and you're not going to have a that gray line gap so let's give it a bit of a, a really thin coat now when you get your paint out another good tip put your, pe put your paint in the, and then roll it and pull it backwards like i said when you were cleaning and it will keep your point on the brush. Your bristles will be nice and to a point. So we're literally just... This is quite the boring bit watching me paint. But it's a valuable lesson you need to learn. Is thin coats two or three. Okay. You'll see the finish in a bit. Once we've got two or three coats on. You'll see the finish and you'll see that we haven't destroyed any detail and lost any of the fine work that the poor bloke that actually designed this kit and made the moulds and you won't destroy all this beautiful work that you spent days and days and days doing. Not just for our benefit, it pays his bills and it keeps him employed, but it's, you know, he spent the time to do it. Don't destroy it. Right, so leave that little bit to dry. Now, another thing I noticed when we've got when I'm looking through the instructions is this part. This witchy bit here. 
that goes on the back underneath the tail of it and it's actually the the jet engine nozzle outflow thingy job and it's silver and the best way to paint silver is paint it black first so let's give it we'll give that a, a blast and then we'll stick that on the in the blue tack for it to dry Very boring watching me paint. I know it's boring watching me paint. Sorry. But this is making model kits. Different when you're doing it yourself. It's not boring when you're doing it yourself. I'm watching some grumpety old man doing it. It's always boring you to tears. Some crotchety old geezer was painting, ma'am. It's really boring. I nearly fell asleep twice. So only when he raised his voice, I woke up. Oh, no, no, I'm going to sleep again now. Right, you with it? So we'll stick that in the blueing tack. And then we'll have a look at more things. Now then, another good tip for you. When you're reading through, when you're looking through your instructions, look at the colours. Now, because we've got a limited palette, we can't really get too fancy with it. You don't have to use the colours that come in the pot. You can use other things. Now I just did it in red anyway, but because that's what I had. Now on the on the seat, let's have a look. Let's have a look see. On the seat of a modern jet fighter, above his head, you've got where his, his headrest is, you've got a big semicircular D shape. He grabs hold of that like that. And that's his ejector seat. Right. And they're generally either painted red and white, or black and yellow, or all yellow, or all red. So, it doesn't actually tell us to do that. In this, it just says paint it 33, which is matte black, all of it. What I've done is I've just used a Sharpie. And I've just painted the little Ds, or coloured them in with a red Sharpie. Good idea, eh? Yeah. If you haven't got the paint, I mean, we've got red paint, but you could, I could have used a yellow one, or I could have used, you know, a black one, or a luminescent green one. It's up to you. It's entirely up to you. One of the beauties about model making, it's nice to do things accurate and historically correct and all that, but you don't have to. At the end of the day, it's your model kit. You could do whatever you want with it. You could paint that bit pink if you wanted to. If you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. You don't have to paint this red. You could paint it orange and yellow and zebra stripes on it if you wanted to. It's your model kit. You can do whatever you like with it. And that's the beauty of model making. When we get on to sci-fi stuff later on, you can do absolutely anything. Now, there is a thing called a river counter in this hobby. It's a bit like your troll when you're gaming. Ignore them, they're idiots. I've got a very good friend of mine called Paul, who's part of Team Inept. He's on the Model Making Boom Hut, which is one of the sites I fully recommend you join on Facebook. And he was very famously we recounted on a X Wing. So let's get back to painting all the things that we need to paint black. Very boring watching me, isn't it? Do, 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 do. I'm going to have to put my device of many seeings on soon for the smaller parts. Now, if you're a older model maker like me and you come back to the hobby after a gap because you've had a mortgage to worry about and children to raise and job to worry about and all the grown up things that the rest of you are going to have to suffer later on your eyesight might be like mine and be absolutely hopeless now. 
you might want to invest in a visor. They're actually very, very handy to have, even if your eyesight isn't bad. There are loads and loads on that place online where you can either bid or buy things outright. And actually, don't get the ones that look like glasses. They're not that fantastic. Get the proper visor. They're round about the £10 mark, so they're not overly expensive, and they are in our budget. For our weekly or monthly, depending on how you're doing it. But definitely, definitely worth investing in them. I'm going to pop mine on, actually. Actually, steam pumped mine up a little bit, but there you go. Shark's mouth! And it's a smooth industry, so looking at small things device. You'll get used to smooth industries. It's a fictitious company that my friends and myself sort of had a bit of a laugh and a joke about. And uh, we set up this fictitious company that makes stupid things. Quality Tat, Smooth Industries Quality Tat is our, our logo. All will become apparent the more of these videos that you watch. Right, so, we've done that and we've done that. Now then, what else was there on here? There are some rectangular antennas. Looking at the destructions, they're black as well, so as they're here, and we've got black on the palette, we might as well paint them. And then they'll be nice and dry in a couple of days when we come to fit them. Right. The other thing that you need to paint as on this stage is part to do on frame A, so A, 10 and 11 is all the legs for the landing gear and they've got a cover. So if you look on the other side da, 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 you can see all the detail of the legs so if you paint them black now we can paint them silver in, in a, an hour or two when the when the black's nice and dry so as i said tip of the brush in the paint pull backwards and roll it as you're doing it and you'll always keep a nice sharp workable point on your brush this is why i've got my visor of many scenes on the head A device of many many lookings at. Right, so let's just give that a bit of a, a bit of a blat with some blat it with the black. You don't have to be incredibly neat because you're going to paint around it later on with the appropriate colour although black is the hardest colour to paint over unless you're using a metallic silver or a gold so just give them, basically just giving it an undercoat with the black it will make the silver really pop Whereas if you just left it, it would look silver. It would just be a very dull silver. That's right. Nice light. Dull's probably the wrong word. Giving it the black just brings out the shine more in silver paint. Right, so we've done that, we've done that, and we've done that. Now then. If you're not going to use the pilots... 01 and 02 which is the actual cushion of the seat that the pilot sits on and the harnesses the seat belts now if we were to paint that black and then paint the seat belts you're not going to see it very well are you so what i suggest we do is as we've got the gray and the black 
next to each other. We'll just do a mixture of the two and we'll just lighten the black slightly and make it like a charcoal -y colour. Okay, and then when we come to paint the harnesses and the seat belts in the normal straight black, you'll see them. They will be a bit more defined. A bit too much water on that. If you get too much water on it, just put it back in your wet palette and they'll take your brush back and just get some off. Really not that hard to do. Just be aware of how much paint you're putting on. And just very gently round it, paint inside it. Okay. Now it doesn't matter if you make a mess because as long as you're trying to be as neat as you possibly can and you've done your best to be like I've said in the past it doesn't matter as long as you know that you've given it anything in life as long as you know if you've given it 100% in your best shot in your heart of hearts Nobody can ask any more of you. That's what I always tell. I've told all my children. Every time they've had GCSEs and SATs and all this lot. Doesn't matter what the end result is. As long as you know that you've done the best that you possibly can. That's all we can ask of you. And it's the same with anything in life. Doesn't matter it's model making. When you finally get out into the big bad horrible world to work as long as you give everything 100% the best you can do nobody can really ask any more of you and if they do ask any more of you they ain't going to get it are they because you can't give it you've already given them 100% right so we've done that we've done that we've done that and we've done that alright let's have a look at the other sprues now on um, We've got to do B1 and B3, which is the control panels. But we only paint half of them, we paint the bottom half in the black. And the top half, the bit that the pilot's actually on to, is the light grey. So be very careful when you're doing that. It would be easier, if you're not very, if you're not very, very confident doing tiny little bits like that, it would be easier to do it in the grey first. And then do the bottom bit in the black because it's easier to paint black over a colour than it is to try and paint a lighter colour over black. That's that and that and there's the other one. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, see, look, even I've just had a little bit of a slip there. I just hit it with my finger, get the paint off it. Tiny, tiny detail anyway. And once it's in the cockpit, you're probably never going to see it to be honest. I don't know. I'm going to leave my canopies open. And I'll show you how to do that. You can have them open, and in most aircraft kits, you can have the canopies open or closed. You can have the pilots in or out. You can put as much detail or as little detail as you want in there. Now then. Let's talk about the wheels. Now, on this, I believe they are silver. So, it, what we could do is paint the entire lot the black. All right, don't worry about the bit in the middle because we're going to paint that silver later. So let's paint the entire thing black. And that's silver, and that part wants to be black as well, doesn't it? So that's the centre of the console. So it's just having, having a look. Read through your instructions. Get Study it a little bit. And work out what bits you've got to paint. And what colour you've got to paint them. And then do it in one hit. That's very strange. What's that about? The square hole. 
on the back wheel. Obviously for the reasons. I don't know what the reason is. Have to look at that in a minute. I'm intrigued now. There's an intrigue going on. Do, 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 do. Right, by the time we've done all these little bits that we need to do, the first bit that we did, which was the bottom of the cockpit, the actual cockpit itself, basically the walls and the floor and, and the back firewall, will be ready for our second coat of paint. Now then, can you remember all that far back to the start of this video? What we said about painting the second coat. If you went that way, go that way on your second coat. Got it. 90 degrees to it. All that stanchion can be painted black because we're going to paint all that silver later on. Ah, that's why it's got a it's got a square peg on that side. It's quite a chunky wheel then. On the, on the back end, it's got a chunky wheel. Okay, this is nice at the front, isn't it? On the provost, yeah, it's at the front. It's a very chunky wheel at the front, which is why we've got to put weight in it as well, isn't it? Because it's it'll just go boof if we don't put the two and a half grams, wasn't it? I think off the top of my head. Right, I'm sure it, you are thoroughly bored watching me do this painting. So what I'll do is I will do the second coat off camera later. What's that? No, I'll, let's do it quickly now and I'll show you what I mean about your second thin coat. Because we have to glue seatings together in a moment. And I'll show you how to use Satan's snot. Right, so remember this one we went that way. So this coat, we want to go that way. And when it's dry, it should be beautifully painted without bush marks. He says, hopefully. Do, 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 do. Sometimes it's quite awkward because you got. But try and just try and do it in that direction and then the next coat 90 degrees to it and you'll get a much better finish it leaves that to dry for about five minutes and we'll come back and have a look at that and i'll show you exactly what it looks like Ooh. So let's clean up a brush. So I think I'm about done with the with the black. Right then. I'll pop him down there for a second. And then we'll talk about these seats and gluing them together with this stuff. Satan's, what is it called? Right then, let's get this out of the way and then we don't get gluey all over. And we'll do your dad's tile. Do you remember I said about asking your dad if he's got a tile that he used, a spare tile from when he left over from when he was doing the kitchen or the bathroom. This is the time you need it, or one of those little pallets from the Wilkinsons 
Now this has got, oh, it's got a applicator thingy. No, it's not very good. Now the secret with this stuff is, if you went to use it like that, it'll go <coughs> and then the bits of string, it does like a stringy stuff at the end of it, it's horrible. It'll be a mess, okay? Now the secret to this is, a cocktail stick. So, put some of it, not a huge amount, on your tail. Put the cap back on it. You get your cocktail stick. Now the secret in this is, you don't want it as a point. So get your craft knife, which I've already got, whether it's a, a Poundland special, and just cut it off at 45 degrees, so you get a flat. Yeah, let's take the part off. Da, da, da. Oh, two, oh, four. And six and ten. Don't take it for granted because they're next to each other. That they're the bits. So it's O2 and O4. Go together. And nine and ten. So it is. But it might not have been. Well, remember, it, I told you to take parts off. Leave yourself that little nub. Just give it a sand. And then you're not going to destroy the plastic by putting a, stre a stress mark on it, a white line that is actually impossible to get rid of. It's not next to impossible, it is impossible to get rid of. And if you're lucky, the paint will cover it. But it's something you don't want to do. So we'll get. I'm being naughty, aren't I? I'm supposed to be using the things you're using, or you've got a hand to use. I've very nearly started using a fancy modelling sound, haven't I? See how forgetful I am? I'm an idiot. I really am an idiot sometimes. Right, so we'll get that a sand. Now that bit's okay, good to go. And then we'll give this a bit of a sandy. Here we do, be careful with these emery boards because they're not flexible, they're very rigid and you can go a bit too far with them. They're not soft, they don't conform. If you're working on like a curve, you can actually flatten the curve out if you're not careful. Right then, so we've got our two parts off and they're sanded down. Now, the secret is, use your cocktail stick, tiny bit, and then place it where it needs to be, along the edge. Just a teeny tiny bit. You'd be surprised at how little glue you actually need to stick things together. Let's get the other part that we need. That makes no sense. Now then. Put the wrong numbers on there. So, why it tells you to take the two parts off together, and they're the wrong parts. They're both the left hand side of the seat, and you want a left and a right. Sometimes, even the manufacturer can get it wrong. You know, it's easy to spot because you think, hang on a minute, how can you stick two right hand sides together? You need a right hand side and a left hand side. A 
Right, so that's that done. Sand it together. We'll put our tiny little bit of glue on there. I bet I forgot to see what I was doing. There we go, put my riser down. I'm an idiot. The guy's an idiot. Absolute idiot. Why is that not going together? It doesn't want to go together. Those fat old fingers. So that's two halves of the seat fastened together. So we'll leave that to dry for a little bit. We have made seatage. Still going for it to park his backside on when he's flying plane. Right, we'll do the same again. Use the end that you flattened off. Dip it in so it turns a snot. And then let's put it on where it needs to be. Please, whatever you do, don't just squeeze it out of the tube because you'll end up with a huge, huge blob of glue and it will look pansical. Absolutely pansical. Yeah, let's put them two together. And then we'll just pop it down there. Now what you need to do is you need to leave that to dry for about an hour or so. And then just, just go off and play on your Xbox or something for about an hour. Come back, paint them the black colour, and then start adding. If you're not gonna put if you're not using the pilots, you want part one and part two, and just sit them in there. So I'm gonna call that quits for today i'm going to carry on painting all the little tiny bits and then give you a chance to catch up so this has been butcher models i'm dave thanks for watching i hope you've learned something i have i've learned to put my visor on when i'm doing fiddly little things so i'll see you in episode five when we start to put lots of things together and then we'll get down to actually painting the outside probably in episode six so Go and have fun, go and build something, instead of just watching me doing it. Alright, see you later. How do you turn it off again? Oh, there it is.